hello and welcome back today we are going to prove another important results from cyclic group so today result says that that every group of prime order is cyclic which means to say that if we have a group so if we have a group G and suppose G has uh, prime number of elements so order of G means the number of elements in the group G is a number of elements in G is prime so number of elements number of elements uh, in the group in G is prime so either G has so th uh, is prime means either G has two elements or three elements or four uh, or five elements or seven elements in this way so number of elements in G is prime so then for that group that group must have to be a cyclic group so that's the result say to prove this results actually we need uh, another results uh, by which we going to prove this result so we have to use another different results so let's talk about that result first then we will come back again to prove this result so what is that result so this is another result it is very important results in group theory but you don't have the proof of this results but we're going to use this results to prove another results so one results uh, if i use one result to prove other results and that results is called the first results to by which we will prove the different result is called a lemma so that's why it's called a lemma so what's the lemma says it says that the order of every subgroup so order of every subgroup of a finite group if we have a finite group and then it's a uh, subgroup every subgroup uh, must have to be the divisor of the order of the group so let me talk about that in more details form so what's the theorem says so suppose we have a group g suppose we have a group g and suppose um, we have another subgroup so g is our group and h be any subgroup of g so h be any subgroup of g then it says that the number of elements order of the group means the number of elements in the group so it says that if h is a subgroup of g then obviously order of h must divide the order of the group so order of h is a divisor of order of the group so every each and every subgroup of a finite group it is the result is true obviously if the order of g is finite so it's true for a finite group only so it says that every subgroup of the group must divide the order of g which means to say so let's talk about this uh, by taking some particular example so let's talk about this results by taking examples so here suppose we are talking about an example so let's take the example so here we have the group suppose we have the group z4 uh, with addition so we know that the group of all residual modulo 4 is a group with uh, composition addition so z4 is our group so now talk about the a few subgroup of this group so for example if we have the subgroup so we know that h is a subgroup contain only the identity elements of z4 we know that z4 means so let me write down the z4 is the collection of the class 0 1 bar 2 bar and 3 bar this contain this 4 class and 0 bar is the identity elements so 0 bar is the identity elements of the group ident identity element element of z4 under obviously addition so under addition 0 bar is the identity elements uh, we know that if I take only identity elements then it's form a subgroup of the group so it's a we know that it's already know that this will be a subgroup of the group z4 so the result says that that the order of h must divide the order of the group 
so because the order of age is 1 so order of age is 1 and order of z4 is 4 so for this particular group and this subgroup the result is true so age divides so order of age obviously over here divides the order of the group so you can see that that for this particular example the results is true the data says that it have to be true for any subgroup any subgroup for any group so this is uh, we can verify that result this is the results is true for this subgroup so let's talk about another another um, another observations in this direction so uh, let's talk about that so another observation is that so from this result we can say that if we have a subset so if we have a subset so suppose we have a h we suppose uh, let's talk about t is a is a subset subset of g if t is a subset of g and suppose the number of elements in t suppose number of elements is t so suppose number of elements in t we write the same as the order of t the number of elements in t does not divide the order of the group g then from this results you can definitely be sure t cannot be a subgroup of g so from the results it says that if t is a subgroup then because if the subgroup divides the order of the group because the order of t does not divide the order of g so you may must be def you must be sure uh, you must be sure that t cannot be a subgroup of g so t cannot be can't be a subgroup subgroup of g so you form that result you can definitely be sure there is not be a subgroup of g otherwise it must divide the order of g so we can use the results in another di uh, direction so let's talk about that so here we go suppose we am i am taking a subset so what i am talking about that so because order of z4 order of z4 is 4 suppose i am taking a subset s which says that uh, we stay with uh, which uh, takes only the elements 0 bar 1 bar and 2 bar so instead to check uh, instead of uh, checking the whole part that is a subgroup of z4 or not you can from the using of the above theorem uh, you can say that because number of element in s number of element in s is 3 and 3 does not divide 4 then from the above results you can be uh, obviously we sure that s can't be a subgroup of z4 so s is not a s is not a subgroup but it's a subset so it's not a subgroup of z4 so that are all the implications of the results or you may say the significance of the results so this result says that every subgroup must divide the order of the group if the group is finite so i just want to uh, say a few more thing that the converse of the theorem is not true so re remember that we do not talk about the example now but remember that the converse statements of the results is not true so converse statement so let me write that down so first let me erase this part so what is the converse statement do you uh, can you think about that what is the converse statement so converse statement of the statement says that so that means so i am want to saying that the converse of the theorem is not true means every divisor of the order of g so it's not true every so every divisor 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 every divisor of g of g does not imply that does not imply that does not does 
uh, not imply that does not imply that there must be a subgroup there must be must be a subgroup must be a subgroup of that order so subgroup of that order so which means to say that suppose we have a group uh, g is uh, 24 so suppose we have one of the di so divisors of 24 are 1 so it does not means that so it says that from this results it says that so if we have a subgroup so if we have a subgroup then order of h must be one of either it is 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 6 8 12 or 24 if h is a subgroup of g then order of h must be one of them but the result does not imply that suppose we have a divisor 12 so 12 is a divisor 12 is a divisor so 12 divides 24 so 12 is a divisor of 24 so it does not imply that we must have a subgroup so it does not imply that we get always get a subgroup so we get a subgroup of g so we get a subgroup of g so that order of h have to be equals to 12 so this is does not the results does not imply that uh, we will find an example in later part that it's not true that um, we will obviously find a subgroup and which the order of that subgroup Uh, so we will not fi find so uh, let me uh, uh, say it more clear form so we may have a uh, divisor 12 but we may find uh, we may not find we will unable to find any subgroup of a group g so that the order of h have to be equals to 12 so if the divisor so divisor of the group does not mean that we always find a subgroup of that order so they just only say that if we have a subgroup then it must divide the order of the group so remember that results it's a very important results and also remember the converse part of the results not always true so here we go so so this result so so there is a name of the result this is also called the lagrange's theorem of group theory so this is this results also this lemma is called the lagrange's theorems in group theory so remember the name because due to the uh, it's uh, uh, the mathematician lagrange has proved this result so this is lagrange's lagrange's theorem this is also called the lagrange's theorem in group theory in group theory group theory so in this video we talk about the <coughs> what is the lemma that uh, to prove the lemma we going to so we do not have the proof of this lemma so but we going to use this lemma to prove uh, the, uh, one of my uh, one of our uh, the theorem in cyclic group so here is this theorem we going to prove this theorem by using of that uh, lemma which is also called the lagrange's theorem so let's prove this lemma hey prove this result so here we have the proof so proof of this result so suppose we have so it says that every group of time order is cyclic so suppose let j be a group so let g be a group of so sorry of order p so let g be a group of order p of order p where p is a prime number so where p is a prime number so is a prime number p is a prime number so now what we going to do we going to show that is uh, 
we're going to take an element so let's take an element so what we're going to do so because the p is a prime so uh, order of g must be greater than 1 so order of g because 1 is not a prime so order of g must be greater than 1 which means that group the so order of g must be greater than 1 so that's the very important thing because the order is prime and prime starts from 2 so order of g must be greater than 1 which means to say that there must be a non-identity element so that means that means that means g has g has a non-identity a non-identity element which means so g has an element which is not in the identity elements of the group so say the non-identity elements is a so now we take the non-identity elements as a and now we're talking about the subgroup so we know that the h which is generated by the identity generated by an element a is a subgroup so we know that h is a subgroup so now h which is generated by the non-identity elements so uh, must have a non-identity element so uh, so there may be more than one non-identity elements i take just one of the non-identity elements so uh, so we what we're going to do we take h which is generated by the elements a so now h is a subgroup is a subgroup in last day we talk about that this is a subgroup so <coughs> sorry for my handwriting is a subgroup of of g so h is a subgroup of g so now using that lemma so because is a subgroup of g why the lemma so by the lemma so what we must have so by the lemma order of h must divides order of g because if the subgroup must divide order of g from the lemma so it can say that order of h must divide order of g now what is the order of g order of g is p which is prime so divisor of p r now divisor of p r so order of p since order of g is p so divisor divisor of p r 1 and p because the because the only divisor of a prime is the 1 and the elements itself so divisor of p is either 1 or p so since order of h is a divisor of order of g so that means order of h is a divisor since order of h is the divisor of order of g means order of h is a divisor of p which implies that either either order of h is 1 or order of h is p now you can see that we take h as an element h is a subgroup which generated by a non-identity elements and since since each subgroup must contain the identity elements so h contains so h contains the identity elements as well as the non-identity elements a because every subgroup contain the identity elements so that is the first criteria to be a subgroup so it's contain the identity elements of the group as well as a non-identity element so order of h can't be equals to one and because the only possibility for order of h is p so order of h must be have to be equals to p because there is none other possibilities so order of h is p and since 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 h is a subset of g so since h is a subset of g so let me uh, write that down since h is a subset h is a subset of g and number of elements in h is same as number of elements in p order of h is p means the number of element in h is p and order of g is p means number of elements in g is also p so since number of elements in h is same with the number of elements in g so h must be have to be equals to uh, g 
so thus g equals to h so g equals to h which means is generated by the elements a so you can see that this subgroup is a cyclic subgroup so g is a cyclic subgroup so from there we can write that so let me erase this part so g is a cyclic subgroup generated by the elements a so generated by the elements a so g is a cyclic subgroup generated by the elements a so let me write that down so g is so the subgroup g is equals to h which is generated by the elements a that means g is a cyclic cyclic subgroup cyclic group generated generated by the elements by the non-identity element a one of the non-identity elements a g may be may have more than one non-identity elements so that's the uh, all for the theorems i think you understand the theorem if you not just uh, repeat the video uh, and you will i think you will understand this is not a very difficult thing so you can understand it easily so i want to give you an exercise so can you solve this exercise uh, so this is one of the application of lagrange's theorem so i want you to solve this uh, this example by yourself so i am giving you one, one of the exercise so it's your homework so i want the answer from you so you can use the lagrange's theorem or the here we am talking about the lemma so from using of the lemma you can prove the next stage also or this exercise so here is the exercise uh, solve it by yourself so it says that let g be a finite group g be a finite group then order of each elements then uh, order of each elements each element order of each elements is a divisor divisor of the order of the order of the group g so which means to say so let me explain that to you uh, exercise suppose we have a group g of order n and suppose we have any elements so it says that we suppose we have an elements a belongs to g and because we know that in a finite group each and every elements must be order of each and every elements have to be a finite so order of a we can talk about order of a so which is a finite number because order of g is finite so each and every elements have to be a finite order so order of a it says that order of you have to show that order of a is divides n so order of a is a divisor of n or order of a divides n so that's the thing you have to prove so i just give the hints is using the lagrange's theorem or that lemma so i think you can do it by yourself so if you have problems uh, told me uh, so you can ask me later so thank you for watching this video